Hey guys, Bud Cubs here with just a little thank you phone. We're not doing another take, we're rolling with it, guys. We are rolling with it, just like I'm rolling with this multiplayer straight out of the stream from twitch.tv slash nixworld. No relation to the Nick developer of From the Depths. They are just both fabulous Nicks. You know, two Nicks in this wide world. Maybe that's why it is called Nick's World. Anyway, I jumped in to play some campaign with him. Decided, uh, he decided, uh, you, know, you know what, we're going to play some uh, designer. And I was just like, all right, I ain't got nothing uh, to do for the next uh, two hours or so. So I did some designer with him. This is the results of the designer. I, I, if you saw the airboat uh, video I probably posted right before this, that was done literally right before this. This is just in the same instance. You know, I kind of got bored, if anything. Because yeah, my original intention was, because, you know, I'm a from the depths veteran. I have a ton of hours in the game. I don't want to just take over and build something uh, like this. I kind of wanted to just, like, either improve on designs or build something while he's doing campaign, you know. I, I like to do, like, weird things in the background, like... You know, have a little little uh, garage port fortress thing on the water, and you just scoot your boats up to it, and you're just like, "Hey, yo, Spud Cubs, I need a retrofit on this turret. Make the pew pew go." And I'll be like, "All right, dog, I'll make it go all you want." And then you come back 20 minutes later, and the gun's not going. It's going. And I'm just like, ah, oh, saw it, and you want a more DACA, bro? So I put on a little uh, slap slack bang, bro. And it's like, oh, toss, totally, bro. Thanks, Spud. I don't know where that went, but that was totally tabular, bro. Anyway, decided, you know, uh, I built an airboat. I might as well build an airship, and I never built an airship. I've built a hovercraft, a uh, thruster craft boy before as a test. It kind of looked like a mix between a Covenant cruiser from Halo and uh, just like a stick. It looked like a stick. It looked like a popsicle. A uh, popsicle stick. Hey, that's pretty good. Popsicle stick. A covenant pip, a pe covenant popsicle stick. You know they sh they should sell Halo popsicles. Can you imagine a pillar of autumn, a, a pillar of autumn, but like a pillar of cherry, <laughs> or like a covenant super cruiser. I don't know something funny like that. But uh, I don't I don't like airships that are airships, but they're actually just, like, d internal deddy blades. I, I feel that disgusts me on so many levels. One, it's it's not a lighter-than-air craft. It's, just, it's kind of, like, the definition. Well, I, I mean, if you want definition lighter-than-aircraft, then I guess you would use the term lighter-than-aircraft, uh, which would be a Zeppelin, a balloon boy, anything like that, but uh, basically anything that's not actively using energy or power to stay above, you know, stay at altitude, stay above a certain height. It's just passively using helium. It's lighter than the atmosphere, so it's, you know, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be up there in the air there, bucko. And um, i got kind of been thinking, I've never built one, but I kind of want to make a fleet of them. I've just never built one, so how can I make a fleet when I don't have one? I can't make, like, a stylized anything because you know I don't have anything to start with so I might as well do something to start with again I, I really had nothing to do and I was hanging out in this guy's stream decided to build something so I said you know I might as well knock it out of the park build something cool turned out pretty well he wanted something uh, with guns on it a lot of broadsidey pew pew cannons I guess basically something along the lines of an AC-130 gunship but in airship style uh, you don't see it in this video, but what he's doing currently, what Nick's World is doing, is he took apart a normal Atlas, not an Atlas retrofit, he spawned a bunch of Deepwater Guard airships and started taking them apart. He got a normal Atlas, and he actually basically just chopped the top off, just everything above the deck, so it looks like a carrier with balloons and propellers. Really cool, actually. I might uh, show a picture of it. Or, you know what, you guys can just... Instead of sh me showing a picture of it, you guys can just head on over to twitch.tv forward slash Nixworld. Get a little glimpse of that. I don't know if he has VODs enabled, but hopefully he does, and maybe you can watch a little bit of that. Just skim through towards the end, you'll see it. 
and you'll probably see me shooting at it and trying to blow it up and things like that. I'm just kind of excited about this airship so far because, I mean, I have this medium-sized thing. I think I measured it out to be around 60 to 70 meters, somewhere around there, somewhere around that range. But now that I have this nice little medium-sized thing, I can get, like, weapons on it or specialize it, put something cool on it, like an antenna, you know, just make it make it look like it does something neat, and then I can put other units near it. Uh, of scale, like maybe smaller escort airships, or maybe just uh, helicopters, if that is... Uh... No, would helicopters be a good escort unit for airships? Because they wouldn't technically be able to cruise as well as airships, because airships can rely on unpowered flight. You know, they're passive, they can just kind of float there, but uh, helicopters would need to be refueled um, a little more than airships. I don't know, I would, I would assume, just because you can kind of cruise with airships through the air. Should I have a, a, a passive way of propulsion, like sailing, like just add sails, or would that be weird or dumb? Like a sail airship. Oof, big oof on the air boys there. But I don't know, I'm thinking, I'm thinking if you had like a deep water guard style airship, which I've always wanted to make, like, not like a moray, because I feel like the morays are kind of cheap. No offense to whoever built the moray or the conger or the atlas or whatever, but the atlas looks like it's a like it's almost there. You know, I think the atlas was built with the idea in mind that they don't have helium pumps yet in the game, so they just put a bunch of balloons. But if someone were to retrofit the atlas to have like a Guns of Icarus style zeppelin top, like I've just built here, and just support the thing with with an airship. Uh, this is like a balloon airship, like a normal airship balloon, like the helium balloon I have going on here. Which, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have even used alloy beams. I should have just used alloy plates because they're lighter. Yeah, if I just made this out of plates or less compartmentalization, it probably would have floated a little higher. But um, I feel like if we got rid of like balloons in the traditional way of FTD has always been using them, if we had maybe a team of people who... I don't know about the coddles, like the keepers of the lore, if you don't know, in From the Depths, the people who maintain all of the campaign vehicles are called KOTLs, keepers of the lore, and they like are in charge of their individual sections. I don't know if they're willing to do that, because I don't know if there's any like actual direction given to them besides like put designs in. But like if there was like an executive decision to just be like, alright, turn all these balloons into like helium normal Zeppelin balloons. Maybe it would add a different style to it. Maybe we could have a new Atlas that doesn't have to use um, all those propellers. Maybe we can have a Moray that's an actual, like, big, scary balloon craft. And it would be godly and scary because of that limitation. I don't know, I'm going to rant about limitations again, in that if it's limited to just being, like, a balloon craft, it'd be even scarier with how much firepower it has, you know? But then again, you're also bringing in all the limitations to airships, naturally, of them, you know, just being fragile, because... You need a lot of helium for to support a little bit of weight. Which is just generally why naval surface units are better, you know, like on the water craft. Because you can just hold more tonnage because the water's more dense. You can hold more weight per volume. Um, with airships, you have like less tonnage capacity per volume. Oh god, the ice cream man is here and it's going to get in my audio. No. I'm um, kidding. Really is the ice cream man, though. You know the little push cart ice cream men? I don't know if you guys see those, but, you know, we get little push cart ice cream men, too. Besides, ice cream trucks as well, but, like, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever seen push cart ice cream men. I don't know. Maybe it's just, like, a... It's a weird thing for, for like, a first world, like, suburban, spoiled brat like me to witness all the time, even though I see it every fucking day. Um... I don't know. It's just it's just funny to me. It's just a land of cars. You have a guy pushing a cart. Well, anyway, why are we talking about ice cream when we're talking about airships? I don't know. That's that's how you know it's a great conversation. Except I'm talking. It, okay. On that note, is this talking to myself or am I talking to an audience? Like, what would this be considered? Monologuing? I don't know. Anyway, onto important things. Actually. Um, two things in this build that have kind of, like, really not confused me, but kind of, like, 
got me jolting. I will be making videos about these, but the new prefab mirroring and sub-object menu you've seen in this build, and they're both a little confusing to me for just two main reasons, really. So the prefab mirroring mirrors prefabs, but when you place the prefab with the mirror on, it doesn't place the original prefab, it only places the mirror, and you have to take mirror mode off to place the original prefab. So it's weird, you got prefab mirroring, but it's only prefab mirroring. You know what I mean? Like, it, you, you're only placing the mirrored version on the other side, you're not placing the one you wanna place originally. It's very weird, but I get it. I get it, because I guess it's supposed to be like, it's a way of just mirroring your prefab without having to put the original one. You know, if you just wanna reverse your prefab. Kinda cool, whatever. It's Maybe it's not a bug, maybe it's a feature. Um, I don't know, maybe there should be a toggle button for it, but that's the point of t feedback to the developers in a beta game, guys. Just give your feedback. Don't be afraid to just criticize. It's not a bad thing to do, you know? It helps them out. It helps them polish their game. It makes their their chunky rock a nice, shiny, shiny boulder. Anyway, the f other thing I wanted to say about the sub-object menu, um, the, the other thing that was put into the game, you have to click on sub-objects to uh, save them. It was very confusing for me at first because I kept trying to save over current sub-object being worked on and I I just couldn't save this propeller. You saw me fiddling with it like a minute ago in the video, but I couldn't save it for a while because I was just like, what is going on? Um, yeah, so the sub-object menu, you click on sub-objects to save them. It's a system we've never seen before, but it's kind of cool. Um, kind of want to see more things incorporate that, maybe like Turret weapon selection or something would be some I don't know. Maybe a, it'd be a, a cool way to assign certain uh, sub-objects or blocks to certain functions or hook them up to ACBs a little easier, or maybe hook sh them up to certain chairs or fire control computers or something. I don't know, a lot of possibilities coming from, a, from how they're opening up the user interface. It's no longer just a bunch of boxes in your in your screen. It's you get to click on things and be interactive with your menus and your game. It's mixing together the game and the menus. It's very blurred. There's no more just menus in this game. It's it's a part of the game's user interface, which is how it should be, and not a part of the user interface. The user interface is a part of the game in that it's like inseparable. It's it's interactive in that way, in that the game is the menu. The game is the user interface. Oh god, you could play from the depths as a text-based game. Isn't there a game like that? Mandalore Gaming, uh, I tr recently watched him review a game that was like from the depths, but completely like on charts and graphs and everything. I forget what it was called. Uh, remind me in the comments, I completely forget. But anyway guys, this has been Spud Cubs with another little, I guess this is a 10 minute build on video, but I hope you enjoyed and uh, share if you like it. It helps me out, but please have a buoyant day.